the successful launch of Vikram S, India's first privately built rocket from startup Skyroot, is an early example of the benefits of opening up the space sector to private enterprises. For India, it may be as momentous an event as the 2008 launch of the SpaceX Falcon 1 rocket was for the US. For the Indian startup, it is a stepping stone towards more ambitious projects. It is also proof that greater private public cooperation is the way forward in this sector. With this mission, we have flight proven several critical technologies that go into our Vikram series of space launch vehicles, such as avionics, propulsion systems, carbon composite structures, and thermal protection systems. This milestone would not have been possible without the great support we received from ISRO and in space, who worked with us hand in hand throughout our journey. The global commercial space market is worth $360 billion and is expected to grow to $500 billion by 2030. While India's market share is just about $7 billion, private participation wedded to ISRO's demonstrated capabilities could boost this share to $50 billion or roughly 10% by 2030. Global opportunities are plenty as well. The number of man-made satellites in orbit is expected to grow over 11 times by 2032. That means over 50,000 satellites will be launched in the next 10 years, the majority of which will be in the lower orbit. These numbers indicate where the sector needs to focus its energies. I feel uh, the orders what ISRO gets for the satellite commercial satellite launching Without much delay, maybe three with the two years, three years, or maximum four years, yes, some of the orders, the private entrepreneurs will be able to capture. That is the way only, you know, we can um, get the market. The smaller launch vehicles where um, the 100 kg, 200 kg type of satellites can be launched for remote sensing purposes. That kind of smaller remote sensing satellites, probably the entrepreneurs can capture the market without much delay. And if they have sufficient money to pump it. But funding is a must. And the private space sector appears to be taking its cues accordingly. Skyroot, for example, is planning its first commercial launch next year when its Vikram 1 orbital vehicle will place commercial satellites in low Earth orbit. Once that milestone is crossed, Skyroot plans to start mass production with a target of one to two launches a month by the end of 2025. Indian corporates are also interested. For example, ISRO is inducting a batch of launch vehicles that are being built by a consortium of Hindustan Aeronautics and Larsen and Tubro. This is the first instance where an entire rocket is being built outside the agency with transfer of technology from ISRO. The industry's growth potential has also caught the attention of investors. At $108 million so far in 2022, funding for Indian space startups has increased over 60% as compared to 2021. Out of the $245 million that the sector has received in the past seven years, around 81% came post-2020, after the sector was opened up for private players. That's what data shared by the Indian Space Association had to say. But that may not prove to be enough since the space tech sector is capital intensive and projects have long gestation periods. Along with patient private capital, public money and government contracts at the early stage may also be needed. For example, a Space Angels report has found that US space companies received over $7 billion in investments from their government between 2000 and 2018. Consider SpaceX. The report highlighted that during its first decade of operation, SpaceX had $1 billion at its disposal, about half of which came from government contracts from NASA. In the government giving subsidies, definitely there will be a limitations. Government, how government can give subsidy? Government can make, as I already explained, government can permit the uh, our present contractors to support these entrepreneurs. That is one thing. Second thing is the launch facilities, what the ISRO wants, can be given at a very subsidized rate for them to come and launch. Under its public-private cooperation model, NASA tenders all its manufacturing to the private sector. It even tenders innovative designs out according to its own specifications. The reusable Falcon 9 rockets from SpaceX are a result of this policy. 
all the designs for NASA's Artemis mission, which will send a manned mission to the moon, are also being developed through private research and development. While changes in policy envisage technology transfers from ISRO to private players, ultimately, the adoption of a model similar to NASA's could turn India into an aerospace powerhouse. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.